issue is not that you are not blessed. Your issue is not that God has not endowed you. Your issue is your identity. Because we gravitate always in the direction of our dominant thought. Several years ago, I met a young man um, I would like to refer to as Andrew, even though that's not his real name. Now, this young man has been out of secondary school for about 10 years. Um, the first five years he spent writing German, writing GCE, and each attempt failed. Then the next five years, his parents, his family members got together and said, you know what, don't bother doing all that anymore. Just go and learn some handwork so that you can take care of your family um, later in the future. And so for 10 years, he was out of school. Even the handwork, he wasn't really doing so well in it until we finally met. So when he met, he narrated his story and I gave him a couple of uh, messages to listen to. And I started attending church. Now for the next two months, this guy retired and started listening to the messages day and night. And guess what happened? After two months, he came back to me. Andrew came back to me and said, Pastor, I want to write G GC and jump again. And I said, but, but I thought, he said, Pastor, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Something happened to me while I was listening to this series of messages. And I said, what, what exactly happened to you? He said to me, Pastor, my identity changed. The way I see myself has changed. And of course, I knew he had gotten it. I knew he would do it. I knew once because I understand how life works. You see, we, we, we gravitate in the direction of our dominant thought. And, and much more than that, we manifest according to what is um, deposited or um, what our personal identity is. You cannot manifest beyond your personal identity what you believe to be true of yourself. So, Andrew writes the two exams. The first result came out, GCE, and he made seven straight A. Jam came out and he made his admission. What happened? What changed? His identity, his image of himself. He suddenly realized who he was. Now, I believe that this is the most important, one of the most, probably one of the most important subjects, especially for young people. You, you, not understanding who you are can, can lead to underperformance, underachievement, um, dereliction. It can, in a nutshell, veer you off the course of life that you were originally designed to go. And so I'll be taking you on a journey, on a journey that will literally see a 180 degrees turn around in your life, a journey of personal transformation. Um, I might not be quoting so many scriptures in, on this journey because I'm going to be giving you practical example. I'm going to br be bringing not only scriptural example, but real life situations people have met, people have walked and walked with. People whose life I've seen literally transform. Andrew gets into this university and then, of course, he is out of the university successfully and is a successful businessman as I speak right now. There, there, there could be some of you listening to this message right now, listening to this broadcast as I'm speaking, and you feel like, okay, well, that's Andrew, but my, my own case, I really, I really don't know what anybody can do about my case. My, my, my case is worse than Andrew's case. Uh, listen, on this journey, you are going to hear stories, real life stories of people. I'm actually going to bring some of them on this broadcast to testify. You will hear first-hand testimony of people whose lives were suddenly turned around. What happened? They discovered their identity. I want to ask you right now, who do you think you are? Who do you believe to be true? of yourself or rather what do you believe to be true of yourself uh, when you look in the mirror what do you see I, I, i've met a couple of ladies not one not two who said that all through their lives they found it difficult to even look in the mirror why because they didn't like what they saw and some of these ladies are pretty i mean gorgeously pretty but you see we don't see with our eyes we see with our minds we see with our minds not with our eyes so when they look in the mirror what they see is what their mind tells them that they are. I want to ask you again, who exactly are you? Who exactly are you? Who, who, who are you? And most times our identity comes from 
what we've been through. We take on the image of our experience. And I'll tell you, that's one of the biggest traps of the enemy. That's one of the biggest lies the devil can tell anyone. To, to make you believe that you are equal to your circumstance. You are not equal to your circumstance. There's something inside you that is bigger, superior to your circumstances. Look around you. I mean, forget about the, you know, all the, all the edited success story that a lot of people tell. When they tell their success story, they edit their failures. Only a few people have the courage to tell the real story. And I'll tell you, when you listen to real success story, they are laden with tales of failures. People failing again and again, yet bouncing back. I love what uh, Les Brown said many years ago. He said, when life knocks you down, try to land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get back up. In other words, life happens to everybody. I mean, we get knocked down. But the difference between those who win and those who fail is that those who win, regardless of how many times life knocks them down, they bounce back up again. They have something, you know, like a spring in their spirit that makes it difficult for them to remain on the floor. And if you have that spring in you, nothing can keep you down forever. Who are you? What image, what identity have you taken on? What identity? Now, how do you know? Let, let, let me, in, in, case, in case you're not sure, how do you know the identity you've taken on? Look at the circumstances around you especially the repeated circumstances something that happens often most times it's a reflection of what you believe to be true of yourself most times the experience you have repeatedly is a reflection i'm not talking about a one-time thing or occasional you know challenges that come here and there no i'm talking about a repeated experience because experiences are recycled based on our dominant thoughts. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, that as he thinketh in his heart, so easy. Not as he desires, not as he wishes, not as he hopes, not as he wants. Let me tell you, there's something superior to want. There's even something as powerful as desire is, there's something superior to desire. And that is your mindset, your mentality, what you believe to be true of yourself. What it, 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 it's a, is the, is the most self-sabotaging mechanism in, in our system. And yet, conversely, is also one of the most powerful instruments of success that God has factored in our system. It all depends on how you use it. It all depends on what is programming there. So that's what this journey is all about. Don't, don't miss any of this edition. Uh, so, so I, I, I've heard so many testimonies. Each time I speak on this subject, each time, I'm not talking about an occasional thing, every single time I speak on this subject, there is usually a testimony of transformed life. Now the testimony ranges from oh, a breaking of a particular habit to, to breaking of some heavy, severe, long-standing habits like addiction, drug addiction. I've worked with rehabilitation centers in you know, a couple of them, and I'll tell you, one of the one of the most important factor missing in some of the program that, that that's why you you see the same people coming back again and again to the same rehabilitation center after they've been declared free. Why? Now. now Staying out of drug or staying out of a particular habit for a while, being confined in a room, you know, of course, automatically it helps you to stay away from the addiction. But has it removed the addiction from your head? Most times the answer is no. And if it's not out of here, it's not out of your life. It can only be out of your life when it's out of your mind. What do you see when you look in the mirror? What exactly do you see? Do you see an image of success in spite of your condition? Do you see a man or a woman or a lady that is wonderfully and fearfully made by God? There's no ugly person. That's the truth. Beauty or ugliness is in the eyes of the beholder. 
Now, but the important thing is that regardless of how people see you, how you see yourself is more important. I, I love what Eleanor Roosevelt, one of the, um, the wife of one of the former presidents of America said. He said, no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. Regardless of what anyone does to you, or says to you, or says about you, no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. So what image have you taken? Young man, young woman, what image have you taken? Now, this series can determine what happens in your life for the next, between now and the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, as long as you live. What you do with this series can determine whether you succeed or not. Stay hooked. And I'm not asking you to stay hooked because I need your offering. Of course, I'm not going to ask for offering. I'm asking you to stay hooked because I need to see a transformed you. I want to see a better you. I want to see, I want, I want you to experience the same thing others have experienced. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call them, some of them up in the course of this series so that you hear directly from them. Uh, I, 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 I'm looking forward to you being the next person to testify. Feel free to make your comments. So send me a message. Send me whatever it is. If you have a question, if you have an issue, a burning issue, you want to discuss with me, listen, I will respond to you personally. You can either, you know, send it to my DM or, you know, on the comments section. Um, I, I love to hear your comment. If this message has blessed you, if this short clip has blessed you, please, you know, let, let, let's, 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 let's connect. I'm, I'm sure to respond to your comments as I read them. God bless you very good. My name is Lawrence Onochia. Bye for now.